We got a message a while back from a listener that loves our movie reviews, but felt like our focus might be too narrow. After all, so far, we've only reviewed Christian movies. So to help counterbalance that, he recommended a Muslim film that he felt could use the scathing atheist treatment. And I'm sorry that I couldn't find the message and thank this listener by name, because that suggestion led to the most bizarre movie experience I have ever had without a bubblegum machine and a robotic waffle iron silhouetted in the foreground. This movie was equal parts bad action flick, Bollywood musical, jihadi propaganda, and magnum P.I. B-roll. It's called International Gorillas. It's a 1990 Pakistani film that probably defies description, but we're going to try anyway. And, of course, joining us in that effort is our good friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, welcome back to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me on your podcast award-winning <laughs> podcast. That's, well, thank you, sir. Right. Thank you. In Appreciate case it. we haven't mentioned that enough times in the last couple of episodes so podcast award <laughs> what did you like better about podcast 2016 this? oh like Coney. <laughs> guys were like Coney. <laughs> that's not the only way i'm like Coney, but it's the only way i'm going to admit to it on this uh on this podcast anyway so uh, as i was saying what do you what, what did you like better about this movie eli was it the uh, was it the six musical numbers or was it the three hour runtime which was more uh, appealing it's... to you Definitely, definitely the three-hour runtime because that was really a chance for me to realize that this movie had spiritually, spiritually changed me. Like, you know, you have a friend who goes abroad and they come back and they're like, I'm just totally different. I'm totally different after I saw – there's an Eli before I saw International Gorillas and there's this shell of a man that I am now. <laughs> that's, that's how I feel about this movie. This movie, you, you touched on it already, but I think it's really important before we talk about anything. This movie was made in 1990. Yes. This, that's when Die Hard 2 came out. Right. That's when Pretty Woman came out. <laughs> this movie looks like it was shot approximately six minutes after cameras were invented. <laughs> that's, that, is the film, that is the film acumen that is behind the shooting and editing. If Aliens from the Future came back and gave cavemen <laughs> a camera and they just tried it for the first time and they produced international gorillas i'd be like oh come on caveman you can do better <laughs> just point it at the people it is it's so that good. bad i mean it's, it's, that good. it's like i don't want anyone to have to watch this movie to understand but what i would suggest find it it's free on youtube just watch any random two minutes of this film and trust us that the rest of it is just like that yeah yeah <laughs> put it on at a this is like you put it on at a party where no one needs to pay attention to it, because I guarantee you every time you look at this movie, one of your friends will be like, what the fuck is happening? Right. And the answer is nothing. <laughs> There's no answer to that question. It's a fun mystery. It's right. like, oh, is Schroeder's cat dead? or is, is there... <laughs> What the fuck is happening in this movie? Oh, there's some more anti-Semitism. Surprise! Yeah, that was quite a bit. That was the only, maybe, like, the only solid thing you could grab a hold of in this film was the anti-Semitism. So tell me, how long did it take you to figure out how bad this movie was? Um, ex I literally, from the first second, where it's just, the movie opens for no reason. I mean, I'm watching it on YouTube, but... It just opens on a Koran sitting on a pedestal mm -hmm. and very clearly someone like getting their camera ready in front of their <laughs> living room TV. Just like, all right, I'm filming it. Everyone shut up. Shut up. We're filming this. <laughs> Good. We got it. That is that is the first moment of this movie and it gets more bonkers from there. Let me tell you, if you would, if, if you, here's what you would like this movie. If you like helicopters, uh -huh. if you like <laughs> men standing in, Still shooting machine guns. Oh, yes. This movie is for you. Especially there, if you like those men to be, like, quickly zoomed in on as they're okay. firing. Especially. Especially if you, if you can be safe in the assurance that no matter what, they will not hit anybody with those machine guns. <laughs> no one – oh, I'm jumping ahead. But no one in this movie who shoots a machine gun ever hits anyone else. There's several <laughs> times where characters are standing still. Other characters shoot machine guns at them, and then there's just dust around their yes. feet, and everyone's like, oh, fuck, run, Ray, run, 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 run. <laughs> Every time. I mean, immediately, the, the opening sequence of this movie, we learn, A, that this is the kind of movie that's going to reuse the same B-roll time to time, and B, all the bad guys will be drinking alcohol and smoking tobacco <laughs> at virtually I mean, first, every moment. We also get the credits first, which is always a good sign. And one of the credits, I wrote this down, Action Thrill, colon, Jam Muhammad, 
ellipses, stunt. That's one of the credits for this movie. It's so and you know weird what? because occasionally in this movie, and again, I'm jumping ahead here, but occasionally in this movie they would actually speak in English. But yeah. it was always broken English. They would actually like they would actually stop. The characters would speak in broken broken English within the film. So yeah. fucking weird. Consistently, like throughout the movie, they would be like something, 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 something. Hand me that brick. And then with something, and it's just like, and no one ever was like, "Hey, man, you just started speaking English. Shut up." <laughs> what the hell was that? Yeah, the the I literally when the movie started because it's just people pouring alcohol into yes. glasses for I would say forty eight minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was just like, "Is Sorry. this a beer commercial?" <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh, I get it, because alcohol's bad. Muslims don't like alcohol." Well, and I mean, just to the point, like, just again to give everybody an idea how bad this was in this montage of alcohol pouring, you would occasionally get like champagne being poured into the glass from the left side of the screen and then that same image obviously flips so the champagne is coming from the right side. By the way, champagne on the rocks in like (laughs) tall highball glasses. Right. They have no idea what criminal lair looks like when they have their champagne parties. That's ridiculous. This is a consistent note for me throughout this movie. Nobody who made this movie knows how the world at all works. No. Like, not just like, I think champagne is served in a bucket filled with sin. <laughs> but it's also just like, there's thing like, whenever anyone's tied up, they're tied to a ladder with duct tape. No yes. one's ever just like, <laughs> no one's ever got a rope behind their back. No. It's just like, oh, we gotta tie him up. Let's, let's put his foot with handcuffs attached to his neck, and then we're gonna sew his eyelids to his dick hole. I don't know. It's, it's, pr- <laughs> this movie is like, Someone described uh, an action movie. Someone while high described an action movie to someone else, but then got fired out of a cannon. That's because it's like, well, what are action movies like? Well, you know, there's explosions and gunfire. <laughs> like, don't worry, it. we got everything we need. He said, like, don't worry, we got it. Movie set, explosions and gunfire. Okay, did, am I the only one who who felt the need to write down the opening line of this film? I, I absolutely wrote down the first line of the movie. <laughs> if, yep, if you so would, did I, if so you would I. give us the first, the actual first spoken line <laughs> in this film. All right, it's, it was all the biggest crooks in the world have gathered here today to destroy Islam. Yes, first yep. line of the movie. <laughs> All, they call themselves crooks. Yes, this is the and, top guy explaining how he has a happening. secretary taking notes. Right. <laughs> These are crooks, crooks who have a woman who's just like, oh, insurance. all the biggest crooks in the world. <laughs> what is it? What is later on is going to happen at that meeting? I forget. <laughs> when we were talking about destroying Islam, we said there was going to be a fire, a fire that burned so bright that it burned away all of Islam? Yeah, yeah, that's what you said. Okay, good. <laughs> Because, you know, when I get in front of the guys, I get so excited, and I, I don't want to be the guy who talks over everyone at the meeting, you know? <laughs> everyone in this movie is, again, no one in this movie's outfit makes sense. Nope. No one's nope. body makes sense. Everyone in this movie is dressed like a cowboy or... <laughs> but a little a, bit Miami Vice, maybe? Right, right, a Miami Vice pimp. <laughs> Michael Jackson, circa 1987. That's a little bit of thriller, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so they have this meeting. The first minute is all the crooks in the world yes. have this meeting because they need to destroy Islam. Because if they <laughs> don't really destroy Islam, <laughs> all of the small Muslim nations in the world will band together. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's going to happen any minute, as you can see in Yemen. So he then turns over. <laughs> he then turns to his friend or his commandant, and he goes, "There, I'm glad I have chosen you, Commander Jason." Nicknamed JC. <laughs> the bad guy. And he looks at the camera like, JC, you get it? <laughs> like Jesus Christ. The Christians. <laughs> They're on our side as well. Because we are the bad guys. We all on the same page? Good. We're going to do that a lot. <laughs> And then we go from meeting that group of crooks. We have another group of crooks that we have. We have like 37 characters to meet in the first. Oh. But wait, first, there's the meeting in the police commissioner's oh, yes. office where they don't move any of the furniture out of the way. The fuck no. <laughs> Literally lamps and desks. You cannot see this character. No. He's being shot through, like, the holes in a desk. And I was just, I was sitting there, I was like, why wouldn't they move the lamps? This can't possibly be a choice. No one looked at that and was like, oh, that's really good. No one's like, yeah, I don't want to see his face. It's just desks. 
and lamps yes. block at this character. At one point, he stands up out of shot, you know? So now you're looking at, like, his nose down. <laughs> it's, it's fucking, yeah, it's absolutely, it's like their cameraman died, and they didn't <laughs> want anyone to know about it, so they were like, just leave the camera where it is. Right. Put the around it. <laughs> Put the around it. No one needs to know this day went wrong. So then they jump to a disco. Yes. <laughs> where the head crook of wherever they are is having a meeting with all of his other crooks. Yes, this is the and second meeting of crooks we have in this movie, yes. <laughs> second meeting of crooks. We still don't know who any of these people are. The first, I wrote down the first line of this scene also, just to keep everybody up. You all best thugs of your own local regions, yes. and I am the world's biggest thief. So yep. that's the context of that scene. Just so There are about 800 people in this movie who identify themselves as the world's biggest crook and or thief. <laughs> or thug, I don't yes. think there's a single character who <laughs> identifies themselves as something other than the world's biggest thief. We might even get to a musical number that argues who might right. be the world's biggest right. thief. And that, is, and that is what is about to So he then, he introduces the first musical number of this movie. And hey, spoiler alert, if you want a spoiler for all of the music numbers, except for one, two, sorry, two insane fucking yes. exceptions to this rule, all music numbers in this movie are just a strong four in a slightly revealing outfit singing a song about how attractive she is and and staring at the camera while it cuts in the most insane way possible. I wrote down in my notes here, oh, I get it. The TV's off and I'm on acid. <laughs> and by the way, every woman in this movie was taught to uh, to dance by Elaine Bennis or Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, so everyone painful is... to watch. It's the least sexy thing that ever didn't have Maggie Gyllenhaal in it. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like someone was like, "Hey, man, we've run out of dance moves, so you just need to." I just the only thing you need to know is you cannot make a dance move that anyone else has ever made because <laughs> all the dancing in this movie is just people like, <laughs> "Oh, don't do that! You look like you're just punching your like you're trying to elbow yourself up inside your asshole." Yep, I'm doing it. If you were to tell me that that scene was just like a documentary about someone who has seizures, I'd be like, sure, why not? That makes as much sense as that this is a woman dancing. So she dances and sings about how attractive she is. And then, busting out of the corner, comes our heroes, whose names we learn a mere two hours later. He sprays some smoke. Some aquanet or yeah. something. <laughs> right? And then starts to rob the bad guy. Piles of cash that were definitely not there. Yeah. <laughs> right. Definitely not there and never were. And we never see again. And then the bad guy's like, oh, there are many ways in, but only one way out. All of the lights, I know which lights here are killer and which are safe. And then, instead of being like, yeah, man, trying to walk out of the club because I've got killer disco lights, he calls one of his assistants to prove it. He's just like, hey, Haji, come here. And then the guy gets zapped to death by lights. And he's like, see? See what I did there? I mean, now you know that that one's killer, so don't step off the bridge. But there's probably more. I, I feel like I spoiled it. I should have just let you. And as a response, our other protagonist, oh my his God. brother, jumps through the ceiling Onto his shoulder. Yes. At which point they do a song and dance number together, the brothers and the woman from before, Muslim Tina Fey, from before. <laughs> she looks just like Tina Fey. She does. With the scar. Really nice. <laughs> Setting. They do a dance number together where they both sing independent songs, and then the lights don't matter anymore. No. Because they have a gunfight. And this is the first of many gunfights in this movie where it's just obviously people standing there just firing blanks because no one gets shot. No. no one does anything except the henchmen. The henchmen just go, ah! and, like, just roll around. But that's it. Everyone else, they just point guns directly at each other's face and pull the trigger, and it's like, oh, I got to skittle, 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 skittle. <laughs> Run away, blah, blah, blah. It was so awkward trying to take notes because, like you said, you never learned these guys' names. So I had, like... Punjabi Affleck, Pakistani yep. good Cheech, Pakistani bad Cheech as the three <laughs> characters, basically, in my notes. 
Yeah, I have. I have. My characters' names are Mom? Question <laughs> mark. Cop guy. Uh, sunglasses lady. And then I didn't. I didn't di- differentiate the two younger men. I could yeah. not. Be <laughs> To differentiate, they don't. They look the same. They act the same. They don't have person. It's just I couldn't be as one of them had a love story at one point. Couldn't care sort less. Sort of, yeah. Right, kind of weird. And how insane. bad is a movie when you're not even you don't even speak the language, but you know everyone's overacting? Yeah. <laughs> well, you're like, yeah, no, no one's doing a good. I don't speak this language, but no one's doing a good job. No. What I, I, can, I don't know what these people are saying, but I know they're doing it badly. <laughs> Which the other thing is, I asked a friend. Who I, I forget what language this is. I don't want to say it wrong. What language is this movie in? Urdu or whatever the hell that is. Right. I asked a friend who speaks this, and I was like, "Is this a bad translation, or are these people, um, <laughs> are these people like speaking well, and then the the translation bad?" And he was like, "No, the people are saying these words. It's a fairly good translation. This movie's just fucking insane." And I was like, "Oh, okay, good. That's good to know that it's insane like... in every language, I guess." Yeah. So they. Then they go back to their house where their dad? Dad. <laughs> no, I he was a brother, talk. but yes. Brother? He's their older brother? Yeah. Cop guy is their older brother? Yeah, yeah they're all three uh, brothers. And, and mom, question mark, is I believe his wife and their sister-in-law. Sister-in-law, right. Yeah. Right. So they go and they have a fight as a family. <laughs> Which is the crazy? He basically he's like, you guys are robbers. You've been wasting your youth. And they're like, how can you expect us to be businessmen when all that matters is connections, and we do not have any connections? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that's a really good point. Let's go kill Salman Rushdie. And that's <laughs> really the conversation. <laughs> they jump right into killing Salman Rushdie, and not a single word that comes out of their mouths for the rest of the movie is something a protagonist in any movie ever should say. <laughs> right. And I love the way they sort of, like, introduce the Salman Rushdie thing with the spinning globe. Like, literally, like, they went and got a globe from a local school and spun it and took video of that. With and a fish oh. eye around. Yes, yes. <laughs> no question. So then... There's a meeting, so then it flash cuts to cop brother, who's a brother, and that confuses me because he's at least 40 years older right. than anyone else in this movie. Cop brother goes to, to police meeting, and the, the police guy says, soon everyone, including college students, which if the lady doth not protest too much, is like, especially college students, don't think it's just going to be stupid people because uh, smart people... <laughs> They hate this too. Are going to be rioting about Solomon Rushdie, and we need to kill them. <laughs> yep. And then the cop brothers like, I can't do that. I turn in my hat and gun because he turns in his hat. Yes. And does then... he snap a pencil ceremonially? <laughs> so. That was was that part of turning in your badge and yeah, his 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 ceremonial pencil, his cop pencil. I guess. Who knows? This movie doesn't make any fucking sense. No, it doesn't. So they they quit, and then. The woman from the nightclub was also a cop? Apparently, I guess. Right? Or they just couldn't get another I actress? Can't tell if, I can't tell if that's the same woman. Are we talking about <laughs> Tina, Tina Fey? Fey. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Muslim Tina Fey. She is also yeah, a cop. Undercover, right? She also quits. They go to the march, and he gives this... Oh, wait, we cut back to the bad guys. Because <laughs> this is never going to come back, and I just want to point it out. The the Batu Batu, who's like the head bad guy, aside from Salman Rushdie, evil has evil a, Pakistani Cheech, yeah, yeah, has a moment where he goes, "Thank you, this is my assistant, Mister Dig." Right. We never see Mister Dig no. again. Mister Dig never does anything, but he does get a whole scene where he introduces him, and he says his name like eleven times in English. It's Mister Dig is how he's pronouncing it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So then. They go to the protest, and the younger brother and sister get murdered. They get killed by the cops because yeah. the cops just start shooting. They, they the massacre protest. everybody. Yeah. Yes, right. They <laughs> massacre they, they, everybody. They, go to the massacre, they get massacred. Yeah. And the sister says, "What I believe <laughs> is my favorite line in the movie." It's my she second says, favorite. But... She says, "Brother, I have never asked you anything before, but may I make a request of you now?" And she says, "He says yes," and she says. Kill Solomon Rushdie. 
which is so unrelated. He'd be like, hey, man, what do you want for lunch? I don't know. To kill Solomon <laughs> Rusty? <laughs> Everyone at every point in this movie, when something else is going on, reminds us what this movie is about because they'll just be like, oh, and by the way, kill Solomon Rusty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but first, before they can go after Solomon Rushdie, they have to go get revenge on the cop that ordered them to open fire on the mob. Which was right. a pretty disturbing fucking scene, honestly, uh, in a sense, because there's a line in there where the cop is like the, the bad cop is asking the good cop for mercy. And this is the actual line. He says, forgiveness is for Muslims, not for yeah. non-Muslims. <laughs> Oh, that. I remember that. Oh, my yeah, God. Pretty, yeah. There was just a couple of moments because this whole thing was like spoofy and satire. And obviously the filmmakers weren't taking it very seriously in, in, in most parts. But there were just a couple of moments where, wow, fuck, you ju- you'd actually have the hero of the movie say that? That says yeah, a lot I of have... scary shit about your culture. A running theme of my of my notes is just, you know, uh, mercy is for Muslims, not non-Muslims said the protagonist of this movie. Yes. <laughs> I say that constantly, just like, why is the protagonist? That's that. If a villain said that in an American movie, we'd be like, okay, take it right. down. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> right. <come on> now. <laughs> We're not doing Indiana Jones. <laughs> so then we get introduced to Solomon Rushdie's lair, but don't worry, because none of this will fucking matter. Nope. There is four <laughs> miles of exposed electrical wire. <laughs> Checkpoints. And commandos! <laughs> now, if our audience is wondering why I just said that like I'm a crazy person, it's because that's what the person explaining does. He's like, there's blah, 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 blah. And then again, switches to English and goes, commandos! <laughs> but we don't see any of these things, because while this narration of all the things that are around Solomon Rushdie's lair are being narrated, it's just shots of the ocean. Yes. Right. Shots of the ocean. Yeah, we're and supposed to imagine introduced... our own wire, I guess. And, and one scuba guy jumps into the ocean at one point. That was, yeah. <laughs> it was a Navy SEAL, I guess. We are then introduced to Solomon Rushdie in the best way I could oh ever God. want Solomon Rushdie be introduced in a movie, which is him <laughs> cutting off the heads of three Muslims <laughs> with a sword. Yes. And then wiping the sword clean and sniffing the Muslim blood like panties. Yep. <laughs> Just, but the sword ah, the doesn't... blood of Muslims. <laughs> the sword clearly doesn't get cleaned off, though. He wipes it along with that the rag, and there's clearly just dried yeah, blood right. all over it, and no, nothing. Still you know, blood I... on there. Still very clearly blood. And I wrote, if I had a nickel for every time I've watched Solomon Rushdie cut off someone's <laughs> head, I'd be a rich man. <laughs> So he then congratulates JC, and we're, this is the beginning of the casual anti-Semitism yes. we see throughout this movie. He turns to JC, he goes, good job. I had my doubts about hiring someone from a Jewish army, but I can see that I wasn't mistaken. <laughs> yes. At which point he is introduced to a character whose name I will not learn, but Magic Eye Lady. <laughs> Dolly. Dolly, indeed. Dolly, that's right, that's her name. Yeah. And... She is introduced as a woman who, because she is a diva, is able to tell who is a friend and who is an enemy. And she also can magically appear in the middle of the room if it is required to start a... Oh, yeah, she just fucking, like, booms. (laughs) Yeah. Like Nightcrawler. So Solomon Rushdie is like, yep, I'm totally with that. I put my life in your hands. So she does a dance number. Which, again, is just her... Moving like she took strychnine <laughs> and then weird cuts. Yes. At which point, the credits happen again. Yeah, we're 50, a little second. 51 minutes into the movie and we get the title screen of the film. Right. And I wrote, the credits just happened again. But that's a good thing because this movie has been going on so long, it's right to assume my third or fourth generation is watching this. <laughs> I'd certainly forgotten by then. Yeah, so the, the, the title scene shows up when the international gorillas, the heroes of the movie, show up at the airport in wherever the fuck this happens. Wasn't he supposed to be out on an island by himself somewhere? Why would there be an airport in a city on Salman Rushdie's secret island hideout? I, I don't know. Very, very, very popular island. <laughs> yeah, apparently. So they they catch them for the first of, I would say, 58 times <laughs> oh, in this movie. And Batu Batu says, 
tie them up and put them on dynamite. Yep. And indeed they do. <laughs> tie them up and then just throw them on some dynamite, which they then light and leave. Right, but make sure they have like a 37-foot fuse on it. Right. And which he says, he says to them before he leaves, after people see you die, nobody will try to kill Solomon Rushdie. He also says, when you die, you will die talking. Yeah, I'm not sure if I got that one. There was a couple no, of I don't lines know what that, that I, I absolutely wanted. didn't get. There's lots of moments in this movie where I have no fucking idea why people say what they said, but I just I wanted to say it out loud so that we all were because there's many times during this movie where I was like, oh no, I went insane. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna turn and there's gonna be a clown next to me being like everything floats and <laughs> my fiance's head is gonna be on my lap just severed. And I'm gonna be like, oh man, international gorillas, you pushed me over the edge. So then we have, we have the the chic section. Oh god, of this, this of might this have movie. been the worst part of the movie too. These two characters. This was so fucking. Who's this chic supposed to be? I, this, they're, they're from Dubai. Was there some problem between? Pakistan they're taking and... shots real hard at this one chic. And I don't know who it is, but they're obviously supposed to be the comic relief of the movie. Mm -hmm. And they could not be less funny. And as a, as a comedic actor, I feel like I feel like that's the part I would get is the chic. I was like, oh, there's me. There's the character actor. <laughs> like, you know, I've got a really funny cousin. He could be like a fat chic who's afraid of everything. And just all this chic does in the movie is people come up to him and they're like, oh, don't get surprised. And he's like, oh, I shit myself. <laughs> and I, the audience is supposed to be like, <laughs> the chic has a big cigar. So it's just, I kept writing, is this comedy? It's the only time the movie would stop being funny is when the comic relief showed up. Yeah. And then his assistant has windshield wiper glasses that we get 87 shots of. Right. He's got windshield wiper glasses, guys. Just in case you were... We spent some money on props. We need to use them. <laughs> Plenty. Oh, so they... Oh. So they use the sheiks. One of them dresses like a woman and perfectly simulate... One of the brothers, who is a protagonist... Perfectly simulates a woman's voice to get the sheiks to come to him or to come visit the sheiks and then kidnaps them and makes them take them to Solomon Rushdie's lair. Mm -hmm. Something right? like that. Uh, who knows? He has nine lairs. We see nine <laughs> lairs throughout this movie. None of them <laughs> seem to be visited once. They all seem to be new lairs. <laughs> And this uh, this is the first of what I like to call the Solomon Rushdie smack talk sections, where just everyone takes turns saying crazy things to Solomon Rushdie. <laughs> yeah. For example, we will treat your body so badly, your own grave will not accept it. Yes. And just in my head, everyone in the theater was like, oh! <laughs> oh, he got you, Solomon Rushdie. He got you so good. Oh! Your mama's so dead, she's dead. <laughs> so was then a lot of that. They a show up. Panther. They show up and they like surprise Solomon Rushdie and he's super calm. So I assume it's a trap because he's super calm when they surprise him. Yeah. They've got guns on him and they're like, Solomon Rushdie, we're going to kill you. Your grave won't accept you. And he's just like, oh, you think you've come here to kill me, but... Little do you know. And his plan is just, when they start shooting, it's just like, oh, fuck. They just runs away. <laughs> right. just runs away. They miss. They miss. There's just dust on the ground in front of him. He's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And just runs, runs away. And then we have what is obviously, I feel like all the stunt guys came together and were like, hey, man, we, you know, we have a pool where we're shooting. Oh, I want to jump in the pool. So <laughs> have you seen where they shoot us? And we all get to jump in there because it's fucking hot. This is hot here. And they're like, oh, yeah, sure. God. So just everyone gets shot into a pool. <laughs> and they all flip and, and roll in a different way. And some of them are already wet when they get shot. So you can tell that they just brought the same stuntmen back out and had him do another one. <laughs> oh, uh, 100%. And then so then they corner Solomon Rushdie and they shoot him. And oh, they stab assistant, him. They stab him. Yeah, they sword. stab him. That's right. They stab him in the same motion a million times. Yeah. Like, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Stab him a million times, and his assistant says, "Oh, Solomon Rushdie is immortal; he cannot die." And then Sol the real Solomon Rushdie comes out from behind a tree, to which I say, 
That is not being immortal. That no. just means you stabbed the wrong person. <laughs> I'm not immortal because someone shot the lady in front of me. <laughs> oh my god, I have superpowers! No, that person missed. They are different. So then they they capture them. Again, again, they, they capture yes. them. And Solomon Rushdie gives a little Oscar speech just, like, thanking all of his cronies. Like, well, oh, Batu Batu, I'd like to thank you and the Academy, <laughs> my agent, the Native American people. He's doing, like, the Marlon Brando thing. <laughs> he just gives a little lonely speech. And then, again, he's like, I'm going to kill you now. And everyone's escape plan is just like, oh, run away. Blah, 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 blah. And there's dust on the ground and everyone just runs away. <laughs> Cut to... What is one of the craziest scenes of the movie? It's a phone call home back to what is apparently wife, but I yes. thought was mom. Yeah, uh, they treat her like mom through most of the movie. Right. It and was really call, confusing. They call mom, and they're like, how are you? And she's like, sad. So they all take turns hearing how sad mom is and crying. Right. Every character just is like, okay, your turn. Oh, <laughs> all right, your turn. Oh, Every character except the woman with the sunglasses because she's not related to anybody and never gets acknowledged by any of the characters <laughs> in the movie. If that woman turned out to be a ghost at the end of the movie, I'd be like, sure, that's a nice <laughs> yeah, that story. makes sense. <laughs> There's an amazing line in this scene where she says, you have people to wipe your tears, but who will wipe mine here? And I just wrote in my notes, who will wipe mine here? The Eli Bosnick story. <laughs> so look out for my autobiography coming out next year. I also wrote... This movie is like if the protagonists were the bad guys from The Hills Have Eyes. <laughs> because it's just constantly people promising each other that they will do murder. <laughs> there was there was some, a lot of that, too. Like, oh, if only at least you could be martyred. A um, lot, of, lot of martyr love in this movie. A lot of martyr love in this movie. So then they put on disguises for the first time. They're going to be doctors. Uh -huh. And every time they put on disguises, the men are very clearly in disguises, and the woman just puts on sunglasses. Yes. Sunglasses, that's it. The exactly. men are like different colors and wearing balloons and fat suits and fucking peg legs, and she's just like, man, sunglasses. Like, Who the fuck are you? Ah, get her, get her. No, 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 it's just the costume. Oh, all right, you scared the shit out of her. I thought you were some other lady here. If you didn't have it. It's like they're falling for the Superman thing. It's just like, oh, where'd Superman go? <laughs> <laughs> so they go to the doctor they pretend to be doctors to once again trick the sheiks into bringing them to Solomon Rushdie and they have this crazy moment with the um, diva where he's like I will trust you because I love you and her bro his brother says you cannot trust her she's a Jew a Jew <laughs> and again I wrote said one of the good guys in this story <laughs> right. You cannot trust her. She's a Jew. Ellipses. A Jew! <laughs> which is followed by their meet cute, which yes. is a song about him shooting her. It was. It's a song about him shooting her with love, <laughs> and the refrain is him firing a gun at her. Well, she's her having going, orgasm sounds. Yeah, and her going, oh no. And listen, I've heard that sound. I watch a lot of hentai. I've heard that sound. <laughs> Many a time, my friends. <laughs> but this is the weirdest context. It's, it, it, it means a lot when I say I could not jerk off to that song. <laughs> <laughs> There's 11 costume changes. They're on a boat at one point. Just This is just a song that they start singing while they're in the woods together. And eventually it, it reaches a point where they're rolling on the ground together. Not even downhill. They're yep, just, just on, on the flat ground. ground rolling next to each other. Yep, just rolling. Again, it's very meat cute. Yeah. And then <laughs> she's like, great, now you trust me. Let's go take a boat. And, of course, it's an ambush. Because she's, she's a Jew. She's a Jew. <laughs> to, which, to which the brother responds, hey, you Jew, and starts shooting all the bad guys. <laughs> he had that one written down, too. <laughs> I had it in bold, too. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, you Jew. A lot of hard J-bombs all over the place. A lot of dropping, this, dropping some serious J-bombs on this set. So they escape in the way that everyone escapes, which is just, we're going to shoot you. No, you're not. Run, 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 run. <laughs> just, again, <laughs> run, run, run away. And they, they cut back 
to Solomon Rushdie sitting in his lair, and he is holding a children's book full of pictures, which are very obviously just stills from the movie. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, ah, you have failed to catch them twice. It's, it's like the people who wrote this movie got bored of this movie. It's like, seems like this movie's been going awfully long. Don't you think so? <laughs> so he's like, we will set a trap for them at, and I wrote this down, <laughs> Casino Come Disco. <laughs> Now listen, I own all five movies of Casino Come Disco, <laughs> and I hope that there's a lawsuit pending as the art and artistry of Casino Come Disco is not served in international gorillas. Not at all, but of course, if there's a disco, there's a dance scene. So I believe we get our, our fifth musical number at this point, and it's another one about a, a girl uh, singing yeah. about how attractive she is. Right, and she is wrong. Uh, let me point out: at this point, <laughs> no one who has sung about how attractive they is has been telling the truth. They no, do not have the admirers they claim to have in every lyric. Yep, this is a lie. I mean, I don't know, I don't know what's going on wherever this movie was shot, but I've got the internet, so <laughs> you're a strong four. Um, so then the same, without explanation, the same seven seconds of this movie oh. repeats three times in a row. Mm-hmm. Now, we later learn that it's because there are multiple body doubles for Solomon Rushdie in the Casino Come Disco. <laughs> but for a second there, when watching this movie, I was just like, oh, God, I'm in the Christian hell. I just have to watch. I died. My heart gave out while watching this movie, and now I just have to watch this same Solomon Rushdie walks up the stairs sequence forever and ever. And then my ex is going to come in, and she's going to talk to me about you know how much weight she thinks she's gained and that's just <laughs> and that's it this is, this, i'm here now and then the protagonists of this movie oh, yep burst yep. through the window uh -huh. dressed new, new they got new outfits this time <laughs> and what are they dressed as <laughs> batman batman <laughs> all, batman. all dressed up three like different batman, batman. As and and not Batman. even like like batman as like if you changed your mind on your halloween costume the night before like, oh, yeah. no, these are not <laughs> nice Batman. No, and it wasn't even like one Keaton and one was Christian Bale no. kind of badass. No, it was just three no, 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 no. awful <laughs> Batman this costumes. Is, from they are very clearly in those Batman costumes because they had a three-pack of Batman costumes at Costco <laughs> where everything for this movie was bought. They were just like, come on, you get three costumes for the price of one. Everyone loves Batman. <laughs> And it never gets explained. No. I feel like a fucking crazy person. And ne they never explain why they're dressed like Batman and the movie continues. And I'm just <laughs> sitting on I'm my so couch screaming. I just, just, ah! I they just they never, just, ah! Why are you Batman? I actually yelled After that out always, today. Yeah, that when that happened, I, I I'm, I'm watching it this afternoon. And Noah's in the other room. And, Why are they all Batman? I yelled. At them. Could you, I have no idea. And, They're all Batman. And, and What's I'm happening? yelling back. They never. And like, okay, just again to give you, uh, give everybody an idea just how bad this is. During this scene, while they're Batman and they're having more, you know, Salman Rushdie, your grave will reject you talk to the various Salman Rushdies. At one point in that scene, suddenly they're not dressed as Batman and they're outside, and then they're dressed as Batman and they're inside again. Like that yeah. actually happens in the middle of the sequence, and this was I thought my one of my very favorite lines uh, when they saw that there were four different Salman Rushdies, and the one the the good Pakistani Cheech says, "If everyone in the world looked like you, we would just kill everyone in the world." I love that so much. I wrote that down as well. This is the what? second smack talk session where they just all yeah. take turns. They also said, "We'll mutilate your evil face so bad that even Satan won't be able to recognize you." Yes. And we will not only destroy you, but everyone who comes to see you. <laughs> and I was just like, I'm keeping these. I wrote these down. I'm just going to send these to people when I play League of Legends. This is just my new thing. If anyone kills me, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah. If everyone in the world looked like you, I would kill everyone in the world. What? <laughs> Nailed it. And again, so they, it's all, everyone takes off their face. Yes. All of the Solomon Rushdies take off their face. And none of them are Solomon Rushdies. No, because Salman so, Rushdie is actually back home using his Terminator voice powers to trick mom's sister-in-law into coming to wherever the fuck they are. Oh, that would have been so great if it was just a shortcut and he had his knife hand through someone's right. milk carton face. <laughs> it was just... 
but it wasn't. He's no. just, and he's not. He's also not doing a voice. He's just like the same character yeah. using the same <laughs> voice, and he's just like, "It's me," and she's like, "Sure you are," because I'm a crazy person. <laughs> so he picks her up at the airport, and again, everyone has disguises except for sunglasses. Uh huh. <laughs> he tricks them to come to the airport because they think he's going to be there. This time, which they were why the, would he the hippie, the hippie band? Is that what yeah, they were? Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. This is okay. when they're the hippie band where they're asking for charity and doing very well, by the way. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you guys are former there. buskers, too. So, you notice I was like, wow, they're making a lot of money. Yeah. for just like, yeah, it's like it's a full hat. Um, so they kidnap mom. I don't know why he invited them to come watch him kidnap sister mom. <laughs> right. But he did. So, he- so they kidnap sister mom and he takes her there and he says, play her my book, The Satanic Verses, on tape. <laughs> And I was just like, this movie sponsored by Audible. (laughs) And she's yelling. There's all sorts of titles for when you're torturing people. We've got the uh, the satanic verses. We have the the screenplay to You've Got Mail. Lots of things you can play for people when torturing them. I'm Solomon Rushdie, and you know after a long day of cutting off people's heads, you need to play a book on tape that'll make a Muslim wish they went deaf. Nothing quite like the satanic verses read by the author. <laughs> Go to audible.com forward slash Rushdie. That's R-U-S-H-T. <laughs> audible.com. Start here. Go everywhere. I love the mix of podcast ads that you have in there. And then, you know, the, you get the chase scene when they're trying to come after uh, Zenut, by the way, was mom's sister's name. They're trying to and, – and every chase scene in this goddamn movie, like if it has a vehicle and an explosion, that means chase scene and that's all you get. You literally get like the one car drives by and then the other car drives by in like nine different circumstances. And occasionally there will be – along the way on the chase, there will be like five guys with machine guns that all stand there and then fall down in unconvincing pratfalls as somebody pulls up – you know, puts a handgun out the window. Not just machine guns, but whenever anyone gets like from behind attacked – Again, no one in this movie understands biology or fighting or anything because it's just – they'll come up behind them and they'll, like, grab their ass and they'll be like, ugh, <laughs> instantly dead. Right. There's literally a scene where they're sneaking up on the bad guys and he just wraps his hands around his throat and the guy's like, ugh, yeah. he's instantly choked to death, I wrote that strangled down. instantaneously. He's, like, using force and, powers or something. And every punch noise is like, Kupach! it's not a punch noise. <laughs> Every sound effect, the gun sound effects are all identical. They obviously had a, a Sony CO keyboard, and they were like, we got the gun noise, we got the punch noise, and hey, if we need darks, dogs barking, burp, 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 burp. I can do chopsticks as dogs barking. Burp, 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 burp. Look at that, huh? Burp, 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 burp. Never more clear so, than it was when the rocket launchers showed yeah, up. Yeah, Rocket yeah. launchers don't sound like Plinko. They do not sound no. like the beginning of Plinko. That's incorrect. <laughs> I've never tried fired one, but I'm, I'm quite certain. So they get kidnapped by the commandos. <laughs> again. And again, they are tied, literally, they are all tied to ladders. Yes. With like 11 chains each, but all the chains are going to the same thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's there, again, because everyone who made this movie is a fucking crazy person. <laughs> So no one was like, I don't know, just tie their hands behind their back. They were like, I bet Solomon Rushdie uses <laughs> matters to tie people together. You're damn right he does. Get, get going. We're making movie gold. Um, now, so I, then, I thought, honestly, when I saw how they were all tied up, I thought that they were going for crucified, but they wanted to make damn clear that this wasn't no. Christian. So they had, like, the weird the pentagram. Yeah, the weird shit it. behind them just to make sure that they are definitely not on crosses, motherfuckers. Right, these are not crucifixions. They're, you saw Blair Witch Project because this movie came out after it. This is like, this is like Blair Witch Project, but different because they're tied to them. Yeah. And then mom comes out, or mom's sister, sister wife, comes out, and she's she sees Solomon Rushdie, and she says she spits at him because he's like, "How do you feel?" And she spits at him from ninety feet away, <laughs> right. and then he slaps her from ninety feet away. And then in the same shot, we pan back, and she's ninety feet away. It's like he, it's not like he ran over there and was like, and then ran back. And he's just like he just has a really Richard Solomon Reed Rushdie arms has whatever. really long arms. <laughs> then the sheiks show up, and it was revealed for no fucking reason that the sheiks are Muslims too. 
<laughs> and they're here to help. Yeah. But it does, it, and again, they take turns saying smack talk to Solomon Rushdie because he turns to Solomon Rushdie. He goes, now that I'm just to get close to you and you stink, you should shower well with acid. <laughs> acid. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is like someone got broken up with by their girlfriend and then got <laughs> millions of dollars to make a movie, at, but their girlfriend was Solomon Rushdie. Right. Just like, oh, dear Jennifer, fuck you! <laughs> Shower with acid is what the, the emotions... And, but they, so they put directly to Solomon Rushdie's face. Which doesn't matter because the guns get shot out of their Yes. <laughs> he just shoots the guns and they just throw their guns in there and they're like, what? Oh, fuck. I didn't realize there were going to be loud noises. Oh, <laughs> fuck. No, we're fine. And they disappear off into the sunset to never be seen again, those characters. Nope. Just off into the motherfucking sunset. At which point, every bad character in the movie turns Muslim. <laughs> Do- Dobby, Derry, Donna Queen. Dolly, what's her yeah. name? Dolly, yeah. she's but she a changes. Muslim. She has a oh, Muslim she, yeah. name by the end. No, yeah. she's yeah, Al Shabazz right. something at the end. Yeah, J- and then JC uh-huh. turns Muslim, yep. only to be instantly shot. Yeah, he's like, she is not just my muse sister; she is also my guide. So I'm a Muslim now. And then he's like, oh, the, and a person gets shot for the first time ever in this movie. Yeah, it's exciting, he, but it's him. Yeah, it's the Jew. But now I, I, I should say we're, we're we're skipping over my favorite moment in this movie, which was the the moment that led to everyone's spontaneous conter- conversion to to Islam, which was the final song. Yeah, where they're all crucified and they're singing, and there's like jihadi propaganda written in the sky during this yeah. shit. Yeah, it's like a North Korean propaganda film. I yes. was just like, man, just like, oh, famous leader will come. <laughs> Yeah. Allah is Lord, Lord is Allah. Allah is Lord, Lord is Allah. It just like takes this weird right turn into crazy land as these guys strapped to crucifixes, not crucifixes, sing sing the summon the Captain Planet song that they're hoping for Allah instead of Captain Planet. <laughs> when our song powers combined, comes a- who, by the way, does not come. At, at the same time, a veil just floats out of nowhere and covers Dolly's head. That's yeah. how we know that she's turned she's good is because suddenly her head is covered by a veil. And then she starts running around doing a whole sound of music number about how she loves Allah now and Muhammad. Yep. And how she would love to give her life for Muhammad. Martyr, mm-hmm. martyr, martyr. So, yeah, they do Captain Planet. And then immediately after lightning comes out of the sky... And breaks their bonds, and a veil covers a woman's head. Solomon Rushdie goes, your god did not come. (laughs) And I'm like, hey, man. That was Thor. (laughs) Their god totally came through. (laughs) At which point, the Koran from the beginning, (laughs) three Korans from the beginning, come floating out of the distance. This all actually happens. (laughs) And then shoot lightning, the weirdest lightning the only way I can describe it is this. When I was a kid, I had a, a, a thing on my computer, on my Windows 98 computer called the Spider-Man Movie Maker. And you could just, like, take various animated elements and it would just – but there was a thing where you could be, like, a ray gun and it was just like – and you could just put it anywhere you wanted on the picture and it, you could press play. That's what they use. I If they were like, this movie was made in Spider-Man Movie Maker, I'd be like, oh, yeah, Totally. 76, 8.5, 52. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I get it. I get it. Because <laughs> just these lightnings coming like pew, 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 yes. pew, 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 pew. And then he burns. And honestly, if you were to tell me in the same sentence, like, oh, I've never seen season four of The Wire. And they really burned the guy to make this movie. I'd be like, you've never seen The Wire? Oh, it's so good. <laughs> That's how not surprised that would be that they had actually burned a human being. <laughs> Oh, okay, you gotta see that. Yeah, no, they put the guy. Sure, why not? It wouldn't even be. It wouldn't even be second guessed. They could do that on dailies. They'd be like, okay, great. So again, just reminding, we need daylight when we burn, Steve. Thank you again, Steve. No problem. I'm a team player. Uh, we need daylight during that. So craft needs to work fast. You hear me, hot? Today is not the day for tacos. Because everyone hangs out at the bar and it's just taco day. We lose 45 minutes of shooting. I don't know why. But <laughs> going. 
That's what I want. In my head, this movie's about Kraft fighting with the director. <laughs> oh, and I, then this movie instantly ends. He yeah. gets burnt. And it's like, Allah is great. Boom, it's over. Yeah, there's a oh, you see, You literally pan up from the puddle of melted human that was Salman <laughs> Rushdie to writing in the sky that says Muhammad is, or Allah is God and Muhammad is his prophet. And then it's and over. Then, and then it's just, boom, no credits, no, 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 no the end, just, ah, yeah. movie's off. I literally think they ran out of film to shoot on in this country. I mean, whatever this country is, they were just like, that's it. That's the last six inches of film there is. Well, fine, fuck it. It's over. Put it in the can. We're done. Now let's go make a movie about how gobstoppers are rape him. This fucking movie. It was Without a doubt, the worst. I'm like, it, like, it made Ed Wood movies look good. I mean, there was. I've never watched anything quite like this. And I gotta say, like, I've invested three hours of my life in it, and I'm never gonna get that back. So I want to try to learn something from that. So, are, do either you guys feel like there's any lessons that we can take away from international gorillas? Absolutely. I'll tell you the very important lesson I've learned because there's always this thing, this conversation that we have with people, right? And you have it every time we talk about Islam, especially in the secular community. You'll say, yeah, this terrible thing. And they'll go, well, Christians are crazy too. You know, you can't pick it. You're just picking on Muslims because you're a racist and yada, but there are crazy Christians. And it's even in the movies, the Christian movies are crazy. No one's saying yeah, they're not, right. but they're way less crazy than the Muslim movies. <laughs> Firestarter doesn't end with him, like, punching Rabbi Ben Wilson in the dick and then being like, I'm melt you with my laser Jesus powers, because that's what happens in this movie. Islam takes everything to fucking 11. <laughs> They're just, so well, that's, yeah, that's no, what I took away. I, Islam takes everything to 11. I, I think you're right, because, you know, like, look, obviously the movie wasn't taking itself seriously, so we can't, like, act like... You know, we can pick out really serious bits of it, but we can still kind of learn a lot about the culture based on the kind of things that the heroes said, that the heroes did, what the filmmakers assumed that the audience would find heroic. Things like forming a lynch mob, uh, killing all the humans, if that's what it takes to get to the one that's Salman Rushdie, martyrdom, killing infidels, the preference of deafness over hearing the satanic versus audio book. Those are all the kind of things that were supposed to be like the raw rocket, the audience fired up moments in this film. Yeah, it's it's fucking bonkers. Yeah, no, it's I just, just I can't imagine a Christian movie where like at the end, like in the middle of the Christian movie, they're like with her dying breath says, "Can you kill some Muslims for me?" <laughs> right, kill, <laughs> kill Sam Harris. <laughs> right, <laughs> which is which is why I I know occasionally I pitch a movie, and I would, I would like to now pitch a film called American Gorillas. Oh no, about three <laughs> brave Christian brothers. Who, upon reading letter to a Christian nation, go out to kill Sam Harris in his island fortress, <laughs> surrounded by commandos. We're gonna have. We're gonna put up a Kickstarter. We're it's gonna need a twenty nine dollar <laughs> budget so that we can match international gorillas here. Yes, and that's the film will be twice as good because we've hired Daredevil to shoot it. <laughs> Am I pointing this the right way? Who cares? Get him. <laughs> Every fucking time a new character entered the scene, we would have to get zoom pans of everyone's face who was in that scene. And, yeah. and a few other people sometimes yeah. that hadn't <laughs> been in the movie yet even. There was one point in the middle of the song, uh, the, the, the final song, where they just started rolling B-roll of Mecca. <laughs> yep. Yeah, during the final song, they yeah. were like, hey guys, we are we are seven minutes short. Do we have anything that's like... <laughs> Well, you know, we did a vacation. We did like a family thing to Mecca. And we've got some. It's funny. We used the same camera. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be crazy. We used the same camera. Do you just want people crowding around a big square? We can do that. Just want seven minutes of people rock, want, running around in a circle around a big black square. Yeah, let's do that. Because they're powering the engine of Allah's love. Apparently. This fucking movie. Oh, my God. And even after all of that, I just I can't imagine anyone listening even has the vaguest clue just how bad this thing really is. No, and uh, do not watch it. This is again. I have made. I said that I have made it through all of our movies on a single watching. I watched Kirk Cameron Saving Christmas twice. Yes. No sweat. <laughs> right. I had to bribe myself to watch this movie. Each time, every time I would watch twenty minutes, I'd be like, okay. 
You did good, Eli. You get an episode of Scrubs. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. We're going to watch the early seasons when everyone was funny. Come on. <laughs> 30 more minutes and you can jerk off to porn. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't you look at your phone. Because when you look up, they'll be in a different place. Yes. And time. And dressed like and, Batman. And someone will be singing again. <laughs> Well, Eli, once again, dude, cannot thank you enough for your masochism. Oh, thanks for having me, guys.